Hi, and welcome to Vlogmas Day 4 and Life with Sandy. Well, while I was filming this earlier, I had told you I was using some Christmas music. I did try to upload this video uh, using the Christmas music that supposedly was free, and I got a copyright infringement. So in the video, I'm going to ask you for your opinion, to ask you which song you heard. Obviously, you're going to hear the stroll on Central Park because I got whacked by, uh, not whacked, what's the word? Smacked by YouTube for trying to use some copyrighted material. So uh, let's continue on with the video now, but uh, just know that you don't need to tell me which song you're hearing because I know which song you're going to be hearing. <laughs> Well, good morning. This is the third take. <laughs> Today is Sunday, December 4th, Vlogmas Day 4. Boy, that was hard for me to get out. It took three tries to get out. <laughs> but we do have a birth. We have a couple birthdays today. Today is Yvonne Johnson's birthday. So Yvonne, is it Yvonne or Yvonne? I think it's Yvonne. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Yvonne. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha, because I think if that was Yvonne, it would be an E. I worked with somebody and they were twins and they were Yvonne and Yvette. But anyway, Yvonne, it's happy birthday. It's also Pam Kemper's birthday, K E M P H E R. I think I'm saying that right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pam. Forgot that for a minute. This is not going to be a good day for me today. Let's start again. Well, good morning. Today is Sunday, December 4th, Vlogmas Day 4. We have birthdays today. Today is Yvonne Johnson. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Yvonne. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. It's also Pam Kemper's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pam. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Boy, did that seem like deja vu? <laughs> I just didn't want to start and start. I uh, stop and start all over again. I don't know what's going on today. I really don't. But we also have an anniversary today. Is Melissa and Alan's anniversary? So Melissa and Alan, happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Happy 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 anniversary! Happy 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 anniversary! Well, I hope you have a great, great anniversary. Um, I'm actually having a pretty good morning. I don't know what's going on. I just, um, I was just getting kind of confused there for a while. There's my tree. Um, I went down the rabbit hole yesterday. I told you I was going to go down the rabbit hole looking for music. So depending on when you're watching this video, you're either going to hear at the very beginning of the uh, video, <clears throat> my opening plan, We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Or it's going to go back to the original whatever I had because um, I did so much research on it. I was on, I'm not very good on the computer anyhow. Uh, I did go on the computer. I did go on the YouTube Creator Studio Music. It was like, no, they were, I didn't find anything on there that I liked. So I went on a <clears throat> Pixabay, I think it's called, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y, and to me, it looked like it was free music. It said, blah, 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 all this free music and that, you know, and to download the certificate to give the credit and put that. So I do have that in my description box down below. If, only if, the uh, music's not copyrighted. Because the more I looked into it after I, because uh, I did my Christmas tree, my Christmas decorations, and I found a bunch of different music and I did, I put it all together. But uh, I thought, well, I'm going to wait to see. <laughs> Because I'm going to do a little test today to make sure that I don't get copyright infringement. So, <clears throat> the point being, you're either going to hear We Wish You a Merry Christmas if you watch this right away when it first goes up. Because usually if it's a copyright infringement, you you find out fairly quickly. And if that's the case, I'm going to take it down and re-edit it to put uh, my opening music. So, um, 
I'm, I'm curious, are you hearing we wish you a Merry Christmas or the regular opening? <laughs> I guess, I, I don't even know what the name of the regular opening music was. I, well, I had to stop the video to go look because now I was curious. It's called Stroll in Central Park. <laughs> so I was wondering, do you hear Stroll in, just put Central Park or Merry Christmas. I'm just kind of curious. Curious minds just want to know. That's all. Just curious minds want to know. Um, but when I, like I was saying yesterday, when I was going through that rabbit hole, going through the, um, on my computer trying to find music and stuff, I was trying to do different stuff. And then I, I just, I should figure out that sometimes the library offers classes on how to work your computer, or I should go to the Apple store and see if they have any kind of, uh, tutorial <laughs> that I can attend because I know there's a lot more I can do on that computer. And, uh, Joan at Joan's Point and Plate said she offered to help me. Gina Pearson tried to help me one time, and she she stuck with me. I'll give it to her, but uh, I was getting exasperated, and she was had all the patience in the world. I do not have patience. I just do not have patience. And so when my cousin Lynn is here uh, from Toronto, she always shows me, and I always think, oh, that's really cool. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> not. I don't. I don't remember it. But uh, when she comes back and refreshes my memory, I go, oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> but uh, I try. I really do try. I just, I, I know that when I was in high school, we took typing classes, and uh, they covered all the keys with little tape, and they covered, there was a sign up on the top that had the pictures of the, the keyboard. So you had to look up there to figure out where the keys were with your hands. We just going like that, with your hands. And... Uh, and I typed really well. I think I typed like 95 words a minute. I mean, I was like really like, I was like a, I was like crazy, going crazy with that. Um, no, <laughs> forget it. I like, I'm like a hunt and pecker. I like, a, I can go pretty quick like that. I don't know how people on their phone do too with the thumbs. Uh, you know, I can't do that. I still just do one finger on my, you know, like when I'm sending a text message. I don't know how people can, can go like that. I just, uh, I've not mastered that at all. But, uh. And the more I was getting into the deeper into the computer, the more frustrated I was becoming. But I was so determined. And I really thought that I really had mastered this. I downloaded the songs. I figured out where they were going on my phone <laughs> or on my computer. I figured out how to airdrop them onto my phone. I figured all that out last night. It was hours, let me tell you. Normal people could have probably done it in 15 minutes. It took me hours, hours upon hours. But um, it kept me from eating. <laughs> Because I don't eat when I get frustrated. That which you think most people would eat when they get frustrated. I don't get eat, I don't eat when I get frustrated. So it just kept my mind. I was really occupied keeping my mind busy, and um, so anyway. So this morning I thought, well, I'm gonna, and I uploaded it onto the Christmas video, uh, just my decorations, and played it through. And I liked the way it segued into different songs. I didn't play the same song through the whole, you know, video. And I liked the way I got it to segue. I really was really proud of my accomplishment. I really was. So this morning when I got up, I thought, well, I'm going to get the accreditation. So I'm going to at least list the accreditation in my um, description box to give them credit just in case. And then when I look into it deeper, it looks like um, I can still play it, but then they get a part of my money, my part of my money that I get. I don't get a lot of money on my channel. I get a little bit of money. It pays for my Weight Watcher subscription and like any little things that I need, uh, just like my stand and stuff like that. Um, I, I I am by no means rich <clears throat> off of YouTube money, but I you know I make a little bit of money, not a lot, but just a little bit, just enough to you know. If I was to figure out into how many minutes in a month I put up into the um, videos and figured into an hourly wage, <laughs> um, it would be pathetic. <laughs> so I don't do that. I mean, it would probably probably be like a dollar an hour or something like that. But you know what? I get such enjoyment out of doing this. I'm not really doing it for the money. But I mean, if they're going to pay me a little bit of money, you know, I'm going to take it. I'm not going to turn my nose up on it. But uh, I don't want to share it with somebody just because they gave me some music. So um, we're going to do this as a test today and see. And then if not, I'm going to be diving deeper into it. I might have to Zoom with my cousin Lynn or Joan, <laughs> one of the two, and figure out something better um, to do. Because, uh, I, you know, I think that they should offer more better music because oh like anyway the music that i did pick it does say you know it's uh there you don't have to pay them to use the music 
but in some instances they might require credit for it and they might take some money on so no no you're not getting any you're not getting any money off of my work so um so anyway we're gonna i'm gonna figure out how to work that and then uh I started to watch on my TV the for some reason I can't get the Paramount Plus um, on my TV uh, I can get it I can sign in I can have see my profile I can go into my profile I can see all the things that are offered I can click on what I want to see and then the little thing spins and spins and spins and spins and then it doesn't go on to the show and then it just says the sorry error <clears throat> So I tried to reboot the the TV and that didn't work. And so then I called uh, Dan Danny because he shares the subscription and he got on just fine. He didn't have any problem. So I thought, well, he said that maybe my TV needs a software update. And I'm thinking, oh, you had another thing I got to do updates on. It's like everything, they call it a smart TV. What's so smart about it if it doesn't know how to work unless I do something to make it smarter? I, I just, um, I'm not that smart. <laughs> I'm not that smart, so don't give me a smartphone and a smart TV and all of this other smart, a smart thermostat. When you got somebody like me that's not smart enough to know how to work it. So um, it's just, it's an oxymoron, I guess. Is that the right way? Is that the right word? Let me know. Is that the right word I'm using or am I just being silly? But so anyway, I when I opened up my um, Mac, I could get it on my Mac. I want uh, the Paramount. So I watched Criminal Minds. But I would get so frustrated. And I know it's because of my AT&T service because um, my internet fades in and out. My kids always say they got to get past the firewall <laughs> when they come over. But then they forget that, the, you know, like no matter how good of a signal you have with your uh, internet, when you have, like when we do family dinner, you figure I've got, well, I've got all five kids on the phone. So that's five people right there, right on the internet, right then. And then you add in three or four more adults. You got nine or 10 people on that one little internet. It's, it's, it's gonna be a little bit harder, it really is. And then my main box is so far from the main part of the house. Um, <clears throat> when the guy installed it, it was just easier for him to put it here. I really should have put it in the center of the house, the uh, thing, which I know I can probably move, but once again, it involves a smart person <laughs> to do that. and. Um, and then nowadays, it used to be that you could call for service and they would just come out and they would service it. Now you, you're on the phone doing all of their work and it takes you an hour. So that's an hour out of your day and you're not getting paid for it. So we're not going to get on that. We're not going to get on that rant. But uh, so um, I did watch All the Criminal Minds and I t was texting with Kim over at a girl on her phone because she loved, if you, well, you all know that, she loves Criminal Minds. I love Criminal Minds too, but she's, like I love Andy Griffith. She loves Criminal Minds. So, um, but anyway, um, I, t I had watched the first episode on CBS and then when she kept saying about, it, she didn't know how it could be on regular TV with all the swearing and everything, I thought, well, I'm going to watch the first episode again. Maybe it's a different one that they put on the, uh, on the on the internet and it's the exact same one but where they said bad words they kind of they did a really good job dubbing over the words that you really couldn't tell from their lips that they weren't saying what they were saying because like when they said you know like bullshit they just said bull and then you didn't see the shit part but when they used the f word they just kind of just blurbed over that and you didn't even, i didn't even notice because they said that a lot i'd have to agree with kim they did say it a lot but I, the first episode, I was just really annoyed because they didn't have the characters as their true characters. I mean, it was the same actors, but it weren't the right characters. But by the third episode, I felt, and Kim, tell me if I'm wrong, I did kind of feel that by the third episode, they kind of got back into the, they still had the swearing, but I think it's because they're on the on the internet that they, they think they got to put that on there. But um, I think by the third episode, they're more into their true characters, in my opinion. But if anybody's watching it, I'm wondering if you all, you all have the same opinion of that. But so I watched that. But then when I would get to like within five minutes of it being almost over, and all, every every one of the episodes, all three episodes, I got the little swirly, searching for a searching for a signal, searching for a signal. And sometimes it would take like three or four minutes before they finally grasped onto the signal. God, I was getting I was getting annoyed, I'm very much annoyed. So. Anyway, that's my mother's Christmas blanket. I, I just found, I was doing getting something in the closet and I found my mother's blanket. So I got a little piece of my mother in the room here with me. So um, 
I had to put that on the, and I usually wrap myself up in it, but I just like to sit and look at it and think, yeah, okay, mom, I know you're in here somewhere. And then I always remember my father, my Christmas memory for today is my father would uh, always want to go back to Boston to be with his family for Christmas. And uh, we were, my mother must have, I, I have to give my mother props because my mother handled all the money and she did, you know, all the bills and everything. And my dad did all the work. I mean, he, he went to work and did all of that. I, I kind of like agree with Edie <laughs> over at Edie's Adventures. She said that she doesn't eat leftovers because she never grew up eating leftovers. That's the same with me. We never ate leftovers. The only time we ever ate leftovers was when, when my parents would go somewhere if my father was a union representative. And if they went on a business trip, uh, Mrs. Scott used to watch us. And oh, she was a horrible cook. <laughs> oh, horrible. I, I never realized my mother was such a good cook until Mrs. Scott came and stayed with us for a week because oh, it was awful. But whatever we didn't eat the one day, she would mix it up with the next stuff that she was going to have the next day. So like if, I mean, it's like an example. Like if we had corn today and she was going to have green beans tomorrow, she'd mix the corn and green beans together. But then if we didn't eat it all and the next day we we're going to have peas, then she'd mix the peas, the corn, and the green beans together. And then, you know, like by the fourth day, the, the corn from the first day is kind of tasting a little, ugh, you know. or And then she would mix like if she was going to make hamburgers, and we didn't eat all the hamburgers. She'd take the hamburgers and mush them together, and then she'd put it in her spaghetti sauce, along with the fresh meat. So it was just, it was awful. It was just awful. But anyway, my mother was a really, really good cook, and she would, like, stretch a dollar like you wouldn't believe. And every year, my father and Christmas would go home to Boston to spend Christmas with his mother and his brothers and sisters. And so what we would do is on Christmas morning, we would get up and open our presents from Santa Claus, and, uh, you know, we'd have our little thing. My dad would never open his gifts. That was his little thing. He would never open his gifts. He'd always be, like, way in the back of the tree. And so when we were opening our gifts, we had, like, little piles of, of like, this was Sandy's pile. This was Mike's pile. This is Mary's pile. And I think that's where I got it from. My mother always made sure we all had the exact same amount of piles. So you might open it up at one package, and it might just be a candy bar. And that was just to make sure that your pile was equal to everybody else's. Because when you're a kid... You take notice of things like that. You just do. I, we didn't care about how much money was spent on each other. I mean, you could have got like one gift that was like $100 and your brother could have got like five gifts that equaled up to $100. You'd be pissed because he got five gifts and you only got one. <laughs> at least that's me. I guess I was a petty child. But anyway, so my mother would always make sure we all had an equal amount of presents. But my dad's presents would always be under the tree, way, way, way in the back of the tree. And he would never open the gifts. And we'd always say, oh, Santa Claus didn't come for me this year. Well, when you got older, you just knew it was just like a tricky play that was way in the back, hiding, hiding behind the tree. But the little ones, like little or they would always say, oh my gosh, Santa didn't remember you. Let's look, you know, and, and then they would find his, his presents. So he would open his gifts finally before we would eat lunch because we had a lunch for Christmas. And, well, we would go to church. We'd open our gifts then we'd go to church. And then uh, when we came back, we'd have lunch. And then uh, we would drive my father to the airport so he could fly home to Boston to uh, be with his family. So he was he got there like Christmas night. And so he had lunch with us and dinner with his, his family. But uh, I always have that memory now. It's like when there's a pro I always look for the back of the tree. Even now, even when I know there's not going to be another gift behind the, bo in the back of the tree, I always double check just to make sure there's not a gift hidden in the back of the tree. Because uh, it was just it's such a good memory. I just, uh, I, I just have such happy memories of Christmas. And my mother, like, she really, like I said, budgeted through the whole year. We never ate dinner on Wednesdays because Wednesdays was my father's payday. We never ate dinner on Wednesdays until my mother got home from the grocery store because there was no food to eat. I mean, there was no nothing to prepare because that's my mother would like stretch things out. And then we always had a Wednesday meal was we had hot dogs, which is why I don't eat hot dogs <laughs> to this day. Ugh. But we would have hot dogs with Franco-American spaghetti and Campbell's pork and beans and cottage cheese. And then we'd have a glass of milk or something with it. And that would be our dinner. Every every Wednesday, that was our dinner. We just knew that was our dinner on Wednesdays. Fridays, we had a little variety. We'd either have um, tuna casserole, which I absolutely loved, um, macaroni and cheese, which I absolutely loved, or ugh, salmon patties, <laughs> which I absolutely hated. Salmon patties, hot dogs. 
They're way up in the top of that scale of things that I don't eat. It's just like, no, it's just no. I, I don't know if it was just because she ate it out of a can. Maybe, I don't know. I know everybody says, oh, a nice piece of salmon. It tastes so good. I know that people have it in their menus all the time and they make it all the time. And every time I look at it, I go, gag me with the spoon. It's just like, and I think it's just because of the memory I have of the awful, awful salmon patties that my mother used to make. Now, they probably were good because, like I said, my mother was a good cook, but I just did not like, no. I'd always say when she was making salmon patties, I said, well, what? is it that much trouble to make a tuna casserole? But probably wasn't that much money, but trouble, but it wasn't that, that was not the money that was budgeted for a tuna casserole that week. We were going to have salmon patties with a salad on the side. And my mother never even bought dressing. She made her own dressing. She used to mix uh, Miracle Whip and mustard and a little bit of sugar in it together, and that was our dressing for our salads. I would go to a friend's house, and they'd put out these little bottles of dressing, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, you're so rich. You have real dressing from a bottle. But you know what? Sometimes I make that dressing that my mother made because it tastes so good, and I have it on a salad, and it just brings back good memories. So, like, you can look back in your childhood and think like, oh, that was awful. Although the hot dogs, <laughs> they were awful. They really, we had boiled hot dogs. We had broiled hot dogs. We had fried hot dogs. We had glorified hot dogs, which all that was was she, and I'm, there's probably another name for them, but they, she'd split the hot dog down the middle, put a little bit of ketchup and mustard, a little piece of uh, Velveeta cheese, because we used to get the Velveeta cheese black, um, and then um, wrap it in a piece of bacon and, ba and broil it in the oven. I like everything except for the hot dog. I would like pick everything through and no, no. But anyway, that's my Christmas memory. I, I'm not going to share a Christmas memory every day of myself, but that was just one that kind of popped into my mind today. But, uh, but I'm going to show you David's Christmas memory. And the reason that David's memory is kind of cute is because when he was little, uh, he was not allowed to have pop. There, there's... Jimmy was so hyper that, and he he kind of knew it was just because he drank pop, and he did not want a hyper child because he knew what kind of child he was. Because Jimmy was hyper to say the least, but uh, and so David could never have pop. He could never have pop. So even when he came here, you know, like he couldn't he couldn't have pop. You know, that was a rule, and so I had to honor that. So uh, this is going to be David's memory. I thought it was cute, but. Uh, Anyway, but I'm going to end the video before you see David's video. I just wanted to tell you that I thought it was cute because the way he, he was just, because when I asked him, I said, do you have a memory to share? He says, oh yeah, I know exactly which memory, my best Christmas. And I go, okay. So then we got ready to film it. So we filmed it. But uh, let me know, are we hearing stroll in Central Park or uh, we wish you a Merry Christmas? Because I'm kind of curious if I'm getting copyright. Bing! <laughs> anyway, but uh, that's going to do it for today. So Vlogmas Day 4, check. So if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave a comment, hit the like button, share if you think somebody might like to see it. I tell you every day to be kind. You don't know what people are struggling with, especially this time of year. They could be struggling with finances or they're just not in the Christmas spirit or whatever. Just be kind to them. And I will talk to you again, guys tomorrow. And here is David's Christmas memory. Okay. You good? We're good. Oh, okay. Well, when I was about, I think, seven... I asked for a Diet Pepsi for Christmas, and I got it. <laughs> I don't know why, but I got it, and I was happy. That's David's favorite memory. It's weird, but yeah. <laughs>